frequent. Today, we are going to discuss about this chemical machining process. Chemical machining is a process and it is used for the removal of material from the workpiece using chemical reactions by immersing the workpiece into a chemical solution. Means that here in the chemical machining process, we are going to remove the material from the workpiece by placing or immersing the workpiece material inside the chemical solution. The chemical machining is a process used for metal removal purpose by dissolution in a controlled manner from the workpiece by the application of acidic alkaline solution. It may be acidic solution or it may be alkaline solution and this solution is called as HN. Means these agents are used to remove the material from the workpiece in chemical machining process. The chemical machining process is widely used to produce micro components for various industrial applications like micro chemical systems and semiconductor industries. Now coming to the agents. The agent is the chemical used in the chemical machining process which dissolves the workpiece and remove the material by chemical reaction. It means that so whatever the agent or the chemical solution we are using in the chemical uh, machining process when you place this workpiece in that chemical solution and be, because of this it is a uh, uh, chemical reaction between this workpiece and chemical the material removal will be takes place from the from the workpiece surface to avoid the uneven material removal from the workpiece the fresh agent is continuously sprayed or the workpiece is submerged inside the tank so there will be chance of so in some part of the workpiece more amount of metal may takes place or some other part some less amount of material removal may take place. So in order to overcome that problem, we have to use the fresh agent so that the reaction will be takes place uniformly between the workpiece and the chemical and the metal will be removed uniformly from the workpiece. To increase the metal removal rate, the agent is agitated and if the necessary, sometimes Heat, heat, uh, heating of the agent is also required. The strength of the agent can be maintained by proper filtration, the addition of new chemicals, or replace some percentage of used agent by fresh one. So these are the different methods to increase the strength of the agent like proper filtration. If you prepared, if you filter the used sol uh, chemical solution or agent properly, then automatically the strength of the agent will be increased. Or sometimes we have to add new chemicals and sometimes we have to replace the used agent by fresh one regularly depending upon the requirement and depending upon the standards. The different agents are used for machining different materials. So it is not possible to use a single chemical agent to remove the material from all the components. So based on the properties of the workpiece, we have to change the agent also. For example, this ferric chloride is used for aluminum, copper, nickel and their alloys. And FeNO3 nitric acid is used, ferric nitride is used for argentite and HF is used for titanium and HMO is used for tool steel. Apart from these, the other agents used are chromic acid and ammonium per sulfate. So, points to remember while choosing agent. The first point is it should give a good surface finish on the workpiece surface and it should have good material removal rate and it should have high depth of penetration and it should not damage the workpiece surface. Workpiece and it should be easily available and it should not be very costly. So these are the uh, different factors to be considered while selecting this agent for a particular components. Like for this examples, copper and copper alloys, like etching agent is like FeCl3 and CuCl3. 
the temperature of the etching is etching solution is 49 degrees centigrade and etch rate is 2 mm per minute like that these are the materials and these are the chemical etchants required in order to remove the metal from the workpiece in chemical machining process and these are the required temperatures in the machining process and this is the etch rate for each material depending upon the chemical etchant then the main purpose of this etchant is to dissolve the metal by turing into a metallic salt which then goes into your insulation many chemicals are available in the etchant sir like this are already we have discussed and again these are the uh, it will give some more information like material and etchant like aluminium you can use the caustic soda steel hydrochloric acid for magnesium nitric acid titanium nitric acid stainless steel and iron chloride these are the etchants and these are for these materials we can use now coming to the maskings the maskings are the chemical resisting coating coatings that are used to cover the surface which are do not to be machined so wherever you need no need need of, no need of to machine in those places we are going to apply these masks so the mask can do not allow the etchant to penetrate through it and reaches the material which is not be dissolved means suppose if the mask and is not there then automatically the chemical solution or the etchant will react and it removes the material from the workplace so wherever you need wherever you do not need any machining process there we have to apply this mask in those places this mask will not allow the chemical etchant to react with the workpiece material so that no machining will be takes place wherever we apply this mask rate. so this technique is very much useful for producing the complex configuration in delicate parts which cannot be done by conventional machining process so wherever it is not possible to cut or to prepare those components by conventional machining process because of the delicate property of the parts those parts can easily prepare by means of this chemical machining process the choice of the maskant maskant is depends upon the following point, points the maskant should be resistant to the etchant depending upon the etchant the particular material should be used for this uh, as a mask end. and it should be easily removable after machining is over so once the machining is over it should be easily removable it should not take more time it should not require a difficult process to remove the mask from the workpiece and then the mask end should not have any chemical effect on the workpiece so whenever you, we apply this mask end on the surface of the workpiece then our, it should not react chemically with the workpiece surface that is also very much important it should be completely stable at higher temperature of the etchant works as in the previous slide we have discussed for effective metal removal process we are going to heat the particular etchant to up to particular temperatures whenever we heat this etchant to the particular high temperature it should be stable it should not undergo any evaporation within the etchant works so this is the chemical reaction chemical machining process schematic diagram how exactly the machining will be takes place in chemical machining process and what are the different process and components present in the chemical machining process see here this is the tub or tank in which we are going to fill this chemical etchant our chemical solution and for heating purpose and cooling purpose we are going to use these heating coils also and this one is the workpiece previously the workpiece is completely rectangular in shape and wherever we do not require the machining there we applied the mask this is the uh, thick surface outside the surface uh, outside of this component that is the mask and this is the hanger by means of this we are going to place this entire component in this chemical solution or chemical etch and this is the stirrer and this stirrer is used to stir the liquid properly or uniform for uniform distribution 
So after some couple of time, couple of minutes, the agent will react with this workpiece surface and it removes the material from the workpiece. So here, this is the place where the material is removed from the workpiece and here and here. So there are, uh, in this chemical machining process, these are the various steps. <coughs> Sorry. We are following to remove the material from the workpiece, like cleaning, masking, scribing, etching, demasking, and washing. So in cleaning process, previously, we clean the component properly without any grease or without any uh, unwanted materials on the workpiece. And we are going to apply the uh, clean properly and we will clean with, uh, with certain uh, cloth also. After that, masking. This masking is the resisting material where exactly we need the machining. There we, we are not going to apply this masking and wherever we do not need any machining process, there we are going to apply this mask on the surface of the concrete. And after that, scribing. So whatever the shape we required, accordingly, we are going to uh, cut the mask and then those cutted marks will be removed or scribed properly and after that we are going to place this entire mask component on the etching solution and then after some couple of period of time during that time the chemical reaction will be takes place in between the chemical etchant and the workpiece and the material will be removed from the workpiece and after that we are going to taking out this uh, entire component from the etchant tub or chemical tub and we are going to remove the mask that is called as a demasking. And after that, we are going to clean that component properly by means of a pure water. So this, uh, this is also the step-by-step -step procedure and what exactly the process uh, happening in the chemical machining process, what we explained just in the previous slide. There are different methods to apply this masking to the workpiece, there is the cut and fill method, screen method, and photo resist method. And describing also we have discussed, and etching also we have discussed, on demasking, washing, heating up the, <coughs> then here also, we are uh, washing. What is the purpose of washing? Also, we already discussed in the step by step procedure and heating and, and cooling of etchant. According to the temperature, the temperature of the etchant in the container is maintained by using the heating coil or cooling rod accordingly. So, the metal removal rate is measured by using two main values that is the depth of cut or undercut. The depth of cut it is the downward depth up to which the material is removed. Means it is going the downward direction. And undercut, it is a lateral distance up to which the material is removed. Means it go in a horizontally. The extent of the undercut depends upon the depth of the cut. So if the depth of the cut is more, then automatically the undercut will be increased so that we have to take care, some precautions. So the undercut is mainly depends upon the depth of cut and the type and strength of the etchant on the workpiece material. Based on all these factors, the undercut will be depends. The total machine depth and the extent of undercut are controlled by immersion time. If you immerse more time, then automatically more depth of material is removed from the workpiece and automatically the more undercut will also come into the picture. And these are the different methods, the cut and peel method. And in the cut and fill method, we are all know that one what exactly happening in general. If you go for any sticker lining shop for stickering of your motor vehicle bike number or bike number or car number, you can see that they will cut those sticker line people will cut the number on a sticker and they will bring from that one and they will paste on the 
board and they will they will remove the cutted place and finally if you see that you are going to see your car number or bike number accordingly so the same method here also the cut and peel method will follow in this cut in this cut and peel method neoprene butyl vinyl based materials are used as a maskers in this process dipping spraying and flow coating mask and material can be used for masking so the thickness of the coating in this process is generally 25 microns to 130 micrometers. 25 micrometers to 130 micrometers. The mask end is first applied to the entire surface of the workpiece. After that, the mask is cut and peeled off from the area which is to be exposed to the agent of the machine. Yeah, we are already discussed. So first we are going to apply the mask for the entire workpiece and, and after that, we are going to cut and peel Peeled means removing on which uh, surface and which part to be exposed to the chemical solution. From those region, we are going to remove the material from, uh, mask from the workpiece. Then scribing and peeling of the mask and is done by hand by using a template. The accuracy obtained in this process varies from 130 micrometers to 750 micrometers depending upon the size and type of the component being produced. Now coming to the screen printing. In this screen printing method, the mask material is applied to the workpiece surface by printing using stencils and a fine polyester or stainless steel mesh screen. Screen painting is a good, is good for high volume production, low accuracy and low etching depth. So these are all the things wherever you required, you can go for this screen painting. So if the volume of production is more and accuracy is the not main criteria and low etch depth, low etching depth is required, then we will go for this screen printing process. And the etch depth is low in this process because of the thinness of the coating. And in this method, usually a screen of stainless steel is used. The screen blocks the area which is to be etched. After that, screen is pressed against the surface of the part. So then the mask is rolled up, then the screen is removed and the part is dried by baking. Now coming to the third process, that is the photo resist method. And this technique has become very common nowadays. And this technique is also called as photochemical machining, that is the PCM. This technique is used to produce complicated but accurate shape. This technique produces intricate and finely detailed shapes using a light activated resist material. So this method is carried out in a step by step process. The steps are like that. The workpiece is coated with photo resist material and a master transparency is held against the workpiece and it is exposed to the ultraviolet rays. After that light activates, the photo resist material in those areas corresponding to the opaque dots. Using this technique, a tolerance of 0 0.025 to 0 0.05 mm can be produced. The parameters affecting the efficiency of a chemical machine. So there are number of parameters. Those para in the chemical machining process, those parameters will affect the performance of a chemical machining process. Those parameters are like type of agent, temperature of the agent, type of maskant, maskant applied method, and agent circul circulation method. So these are the different parameters will will affect the process performance of a process performance in the chemical machining process. Now coming to the outside res uh, output responses like metal removal rate and surface finish. So the metal removal rate plays an important role in evaluating the efficiency of a non-traditional machining process that is a, even in chemical machining process also. The metal removal rate depends on, on the design pattern which are about to produce. So what is the design? Uh, depending upon design process, design pattern, depending upon that, the metal removal rate will be different. Acid and corrosive chemicals used into 
remove the metal quickly and tend to have many side effects which results in reduction in surface finish and increased undercutting. So these are the main problems will come into the picture. If you use this acid and corrosive materials to remove the metal from the workers. While the greater the etching temperature, there is a bond between the mask end and workpiece, which will be attacked. So this might give higher stress due to higher heating and which can have impact on the strength of the material. If the metal removal rate is not controlled, this lead led to causing the problems that can affect the surface and accuracy. So these are the different materials and this is the H rate and this is the tolerance limits what we're going to obtain in the chemical machining process. Thank you.